okay, we're setting up to put our drainage pipe in, our stone in, our flow channel, and set it up and then re-cement everything with the right pitch to go around to our heavy-duty commercial pump station and pump that water up away from the house. Now, you can see where we're going to be managing the water is about 10 to 12 inches below the bottom of the floor. The system we're tearing out manages the water within the depth of the floor so the whole floor sits in water before any water actually travels through their waterproofing system. So there's a, probably around 20 times more drainage the way that we're going to do it, but we're able to keep the structural integrity of the uh, foundation intact where we are able to leave spacers here, here, and periodically around the entire foundation. In order to install their system, they remove that floor entirely off of the footing, which takes that support away from the wall, which holds the walls out. Those, uh, basically, it's three big pieces of concrete. You have your footing, and your wall sits on top of the footing. The floor is poured, so it sits on the ledge of the footing and up against your wall, and it holds your walls out. You remove that, you lose a lot of support holding those walls out. And it has a tendency, or lends itself to cracking of the walls when you get heavier storms, Water tables fill up on the outside of your wall and push on the wall. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of drainage already set up, ready to go in. And now we're going to be taking out the uh, system that was put in by another company. A whole bunch of questions are brought up of, of why they installed it the way that they did. And let me go through them with you. Normally, you'd never stop a foot away from the end of, of a wall. We're running this whole length of the wall. Stopping here is not a good idea because the tricky part of drainage is usually in the corner. So there's no reason not to put in an extra two or three feet. So we would come up to the wall, finish this whole wall, and then actually wrap the corner. We call it wrapping the corner because once we do that and get enough drainage around the corner, we've actually now tapped into the water that's building up on the outside of here and taking off a whole bunch more stress from that water that builds up out in the backfill area, that false water table that we've talked about in, in so many of our videos. The other thing too is if you notice here, this system has been installed about two and a half to three inches out away from this wall. There's a reason for that. And it's not a great reason. And actually it's probably the worst reason in the world. This wall was finished. It had drywall and or paneling. The customer actually removed it uh, prior to us coming out to put the waterproofing system in. What this waterproofing company did, probably one of the worst ideas in all of waterproofing, is they took and they put their system right in front of a studded out wall. Here's where it really turns into a bad idea. You put your drainage up in front of a studded out wall, has insulation behind it. Water's got to travel underneath the wall, across the floor, across a kick plate to get down into their drainage. Mold needs lack of light, lack of ventilation, and an organic food source in order to grow. Nothing happens until you add one more ingredient and that's moisture or water. We have moisture and water coming through enough that they put a waterproofing system in, locked in behind the walls, basically turning it into a mold furnace, growing all kinds of crazy mold behind here because it's locked that moisture into lack of light, lack of ventilation in an organic food source and then with a whole bunch of, of moisture in and locked in so it can't even evaporate and dry out. Worst idea in the world, easiest way for them to do it, the waterproofing company with the minimal amount of work, minimal amount of collateral damage. But sometimes you have to explain to the customer the right way to do something. You know, you have to take some further measures. In other words, cutting the paneling, cutting the drywall in order to expose the wall, get rid of that dirty, moldy drywall or, or, or paneling and start fresh and then have a, a, a clean access, which would allow us then to put this waterproofing system flush up against the wall. They definitely put it in front of the studded out wall. We have our, our, our fairing strips or studded strips out here. And as we go down, it's still out that two and a half to three inches. And then it necks back flush to the wall over here because there was no, this wasn't finished. There was no paneling or drywall here. And then they have what these, these things are called clean outs. Because there's no real pitch to these systems, they need to be flushed out. They grow bacteria called iron ochre and mold in them. So there's a, uh, usually a maintenance contract where they want to flush it out once or twice a year. The nice thing is that it gives them a, uh, a second tier of revenue because they can keep coming back.
you can see where the drain is. And you see, I, I'm always about where your drainage is because that has everything to do with how dry you can get your basement. Look where this is. I mean, if I throw a, a level on this thing, if you look at the pitch right here, you'll see it's actually reverse pitch. This end should be higher to have water flow through it that way. So if I were to lift this up, th now the bubble comes into being just level. Even though I've raised this end up, the way it's installed, this actually has a pitch going away from where the pump is. I'm going to pull this out now. We're just going to see if, if we do have any kind of moisture or even water underneath where, this, where the gutter is installed. Well, you can see there's no stone underneath it. It's not like the system's even been installed. They put a, a little bit of stone on the outside of it, but nothing at all underneath. It's just, it's down to just that clay and it's all, the clay is all wet. So this whole area has to be completely filled with water before anything can get into their drainage system. That's why these things fail all the time and we get called to tear them out and put new systems in, real waterproofing systems in. Here's the thing, all of the drainage comes across to here and it goes from that gutter system to something that doesn't have a bottom to it. So this thing sits right here and if water were, which I, it doesn't do as you can tell by the, the trench, water is supposed to flow through here and then somehow get through this part that doesn't even have a bottom in around there to the other side and then all the way around to get over into the pump. This is just not a waterproofing system. These systems, they look great and with the right marketing, they sound fantastic and they're called like high tech and things like that. Take a look at it, take it at face value. If you take a look at the trench that we have going down here, that's the only drainage you have and they charge you more than what I charge to give you this much drainage, what America Dry Basement System charges for a system that doesn't have a chance of doing what they explain that it will do. With these systems, one of the tricky parts is corners. Uh, you would think that they would just do like a 45 and put the two pieces together that would kind of facilitate a flow of water through it, but they don't. So let me show you what the bottoms in the corners look like. We've torn so many of these out that we know exactly what we're going to find. If we tear this out, you're going to see this doesn't have a bottom. That's the bottom of this right here. This just sits on there like that. That just enables them to re-cement the floor back up that inch or so in order to keep the floor, the continuity and, and levelness of the floor around. So they're telling you it's a waterproofing system that has high-tech, state-of-the-art effectiveness to carry water around your, your foundation, around your perimeter, and the corners don't have bottoms. We removed that piece of floor that the other company left it in place. It came off like butter, as, as you saw. There's a thing about wet cement and dry cement. When they originally do your footing, that's the first piece of the three pieces of, of a traditional three-piece foundation. So they allow that to cure. It's got to be level. The town will not let you build the house until they send their inspector out and signs off on it. And he does six to eight to ten different checks to make sure that your footing is absolutely level. So if someone's telling you that one part of your, your basement is higher than another part of your basement, it has nothing to do with your footing. So you have a perfectly level footing, and then they come and they put forms up if you have a poured concrete wall, and they do it right in the middle of the footing most often. Sometimes it does shift a little bit one way or the other. And then they pour the concrete into the forms, allow it to, to harden, to dry, but when they do that, it's the wet cement of the walls on top of the footing, which is already dry. When you put two concretes together, one's dry and then another wet one on top of it and allow that one to dry, it creates what we call a cold joint. That cold joint is a seam that if you put water pressure on, allows water to pass through it. There's another set of cold joints. Uh, when they pour the whole floor, this was all one piece of floor. In other words, this goes right across here. That other cold joint is when the water comes through this cold joint here, there's another cold joint where that matches up and the water then comes this way and up and on top of your floor. That's the way the water travels through your foundation to get up and to flood your basement. The other problem we keep going back to is if you have your, if you have your drainage, in other words, if, this, if they had done this, gone the extra step, then this, this drain pipe would have been over and sat on top of the footing 
once again, you're managing the water here completely within the depth of your floor. Wrong system for this particular type of foundation. A traditional three-piece poured foundation or a block foundation, this is the wrong system for it. You're never going to get the results that you want. And in order to put this here, when they put the concrete floor back, this has to be three and a half inches. That's one and three quarter inches, so you're not even code compliant with this particular type of system. But don't take my word for it. Call your building inspector, get the stats from whoever's going to install the waterproofing system, and find out how much floor they're going to put back. You'll be surprised at the answers. We just removed the discharge line. My guy basically just took it, pulled it, and it snapped off. He actually was trying to pull out where they sealed around it to have it all come out in one piece is what he actually expected. But we realized that this is the cheapest type of PVC that you can buy. It's not your Schedule 40, which you should use for any type of plumbing that you're ever going to do in your house with sump pumps, anything. Any kind of plumbing you're going to do, you want to go with Schedule 40. If you take a look at how skinny this is, this is the most flimsy type of, of PVC that you can use. Whereas you can see in comparison to a, uh, a Schedule 40, the difference is, uh, you know, it's almost double the strength. As we work our way down here, normally we would have left spacers here, but because of the way that the other system has to be installed, they had to remove that floor completely away from the wall. They had the floor stay on the footing, but then they created a gap where they had to put that gutter system in. We had to remove the part that they left so that we could get right down to the footing where we need to be to put our drainage in and still enable us to put back the full thickness of the floor. So as we work our way down here, we can show you a couple other cool things about uh, the benefits of our particular type of system. If you can see our white PVC, and that's Schedule 40, unlike the stuff that we've just replaced, is within the trench. So we're able to actually put a pump all the way on the other side of the basement, run the discharge through the trench, and bring it up and take it out where the discharges were with the other system, which is actually a decent spot for the discharge. Being able to do that rather than running it across the ceiling where it's hooked up to your floor joists and every time the pump goes on, you're gonna get a little bit of vibration and shake and it goes right up through the rest of the house. This is a completely silent, uh, great way in order to run a discharge line to get over and put our uh, discharge line out through the foundation wall wherever we want it. In this particular case, we're gonna be putting it out right out where the holes were already made. And if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe so you can see all of our other videos too. So until next time, enjoy your dry basement.